you so much, Bishop. I appreciate so much what God is doing over the nations and the continent of Africa and through each one of you who are on this platform and are receiving uh, messages on a daily basis, praying for the continent of Africa. But those of you on Zoom, those of you on YouTube and all the other media platforms, we welcome you, as Bishop said. And we are just so grateful that God is joining Africa and Africans together for a vision that God has even placed on our guest speaker this morning, Juan Fantondo, who's a mighty uh, evangelist. I've gotten to know him. I love working with him. Uh, Juan will inspire you this morning. And please invite, continue to invite people to the platform as we continue. And we have a few more minutes to go before we actually get the meat of the word. This morning, as I was waiting upon the Lord and praying for Juan and praying for us as we are going to be listening and, and have God tug at our hearts, you know, because we are in a crucial time period right now. And we just cannot avoid understanding firstly and recognizing that. And we have been basically beckoned by the Lord to be awakened and to know the times. And those of you who've been getting our daily devotionals on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, on our WhatsApp and Telegram platforms, will know that God has been speaking to us on the joy of the Lord that is our strength. And his joy is that all should know and come to the salvation of his ultimate plan and destiny so that the kingdom of God may be fully fulfilled in such a time as this. And when we partner with the Lord and as we partner with the kingdom, the joy of God, the joy of the Lord, that we get what his desire is, becomes our strength. We are strengthened as we participate with the kingdom agenda. And this to me has been an exciting revelation. And I have experienced as well that God is strengthening our hearts. And as we learned that strengthening from the Lord is a revelation of our hearts. He strengthens our hearts by revealing to us what is inside of us, what potential lies inside of us, and perhaps what should not be there and is occupied occupying a space that he wants to occupy. So we have been learning so much about being positioned in this time. And uh, Juan asked me just to reread the word that the Lord gave to me this morning as we were praying for Africa in particular. And I would like you to just indicate perhaps in the message box below with your telephone number if you have not received this word or otherwise go on to Ariella Ministries, go on to Naomi Schenneberger Facebook page and you will receive this word that the Lord gave on this very powerful day of 17th of September, the ninth month in the year 22. Very powerful words that the Lord gave to us today. So the Lord is saying to Africa, I hear a new sound over Africa. Let there be light. I hear his voice thunder. Awaken my sons and daughters. Destinies, destinies. I'm restoring destinies. What an incredible word. Destinies of individuals, destinies of nations, destinies of ministries, destinies of businesses. He is restoring destinies. I'm giving back to those who have lost and restoring my joy to those who've been mourning. I am pouring new wine upon the nations of Africa, and my spirit is hovering over the chaos, over the void, confusion, and darkness. My spirit is igniting fires of revival. I hear, let there be light, let there be light. I see angelic hosts in their millions pouring into Africa. I saw this vision quite profound, and almost I stood in awe as I saw this. There's heavenly activity beyond our imagination happening over the continent. I see visitations of heavenly interventions beginning to accelerate. We shall hear of signs and wonders as were and even greater than the children of Israel experienced in the desert. You know, as I wrote that, 
I saw that places where there is no more food, where people are dying of starvation, God providing manna. Really, I, I saw that in the spirit. I saw God releasing water out of the ground where there's physically no more wells or water's drying up, rivers are drying up. I saw God doing supernatural wonders as he did to the children of Israel. My people, he says, shall not lack. I am their God. I shall outwit the gods of their land and ancestry worship and reveal myself in extraordinary, extraordinary new ways. The world shall stand in awe of God's mighty and marvelous works. Whilst nations are in disarray and the spirit of death seeks a resting place for further despair and fear to root and take root in the hearts of people, I say to you that through my intervention, many shall reverently fear my name from the west and my glory from the rising of the sun. For the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against all who have mocked and shamed me. With a rushing stream driven by my spirit, the enemies to my people shall be overwhelmed let all and everything that has breath praise him for his goodness and mercy shall surely endure forever his love never fails his name is faithful and true raise up a new song nations of africa for your time has come raise up a sound all you who call upon the name of the lord and then the Lord said, a new name, a new name he's giving to the continent of Africa. I'm also raising you up as an economic giant. Remove your filthy garments and clothe yourself with a new name. You are no longer to identify yourselves as an enslaved continent, nor remain a victim to con continual financial aid. You are not the dark continent. You are my rich inheritance, and through you my light shall shine. Everything you need is within you, Africa. You are not wanting, and your false identity is no longer. I've cast my eye towards the continent of Africa. Nations are rising, and those nations who have been last shall be first. I'm thinking of Malawi in particular, very, very much Malawi, Zimbabwe, the poorest of nations, God is going to raise them up. I'm a miracle working God. Africa, you shall lend to the nations and see your riches hidden within you. Your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in possession for the nation and kingdom will not serve you who not will not serve you shall perish and those nations shall be utterly ruined. Africa arise for I call you a continent of light. Hallelujah. And with that, we just declare Africa, you shall arise. Africa, you are the continent of light. And I see investors coming into Africa. Hallelujah. And so I want to introduce this morning, Juan Fantonda, as the Lord just led us to just have him on the platform since God is raising up individuals and you are part of that harvest. Whether you're physically participating, you can financially participate, participate you can prayerfully in, uh, participate but God is calling you to participate with kingdom agenda so Juan Fantunda is uh, the head of a ministry called Kingdom Revival Africa and he's going to share with us let the king of glory come into Africa and he's been an evangelist for over 12 years he has ministered in over 12 or more nations across Africa he's married to a beautiful wife called Nikki and he began his ministry to orphanages and little children and he said to me as we were speaking that the Lord really revealed himself <clears throat> through the child's heart and he grew to be childlike in the presence of God and you know I've been working with Joan and I just want to appreciate you Joan you know I love your childlike faith I love your zest you know, and I want to just quickly share, you know, I was in, I was in Malawi last year with Juan and we were ministering to um, just a few children, perhaps like 150 children under a tree. And as we were ministering, the enemy tried to disrupt that meeting with uh, the witch doctors coming in their paraphernalia. They were all dressed up um, actually to an, a, an unbeliever and to your children. It was incredibly terrifying. And the children were suddenly distracted and Juwan rose up like a mighty man of valor. <laughs> I'll never forget that day. And you confronted them head on and ran to them. And um, 
commanded in the name of Jesus for them to stop. And in terror and fear of the Lord, they stood still and backed off and ran in the other direction. And that was the authority, childlike faith that I saw in you, Joanne. So I'm really appreciative of that. Thank you, Azula. Um, just hold on. I just need to mute somebody. There we go. All right. If you could all just mute yourself or make sure that you're muted. And I want to just introduce you. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. And we look so forward to hearing what you have to say. Over to you, Joanne. Praise God. I, I thank you, Naomi, for everything that you are also doing on this platform in all over Africa. And I greet each and every one of you in the precious name of Jesus listening to this broadcast today. So um, I also just want to say that I really pray today because all I'm going to be here today for is I'm here to stir your faith today. So I just want to stir you and also I want us just to, again, remember who we are. Because so many times we run around and we forget who we are. So I just want to touch a few things as, as the Lord has led me. And I won't go into a specific line. I'm just going to go all over as the Lord is leading me. So I also pray today that as I speak to you, that our interpreter, the Holy Ghost, will speak to you even the words that I speak, but interpret it to you for this moment for what you are needing. So I just want to start off the message for today for the platform was to prepare Africa for the king. So um, I just want to say that that remember, we, are, we, we must prepare the whole world for the king. But why we say Africa for today, that is the mandate that the, the Lord has given me, in, and that is for Africa. So our focus is on Africa, but remember, we have to prepare the whole world uh, for the king. So if we just quickly go, I just want to talk to us about something. What is evangelism? Now, we all might see it differently, and the, the best way that I can put it to us is evangelism is a war. So it is a war for the souls of men and women and the boys and the girls that is bound in sin. That is evangelism. So what we have to understand is that the moment we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we actually become evangelists. So in whichever way you go forward to preach the message is all on different platforms because you might be a housewife and you teach your child of Jesus and you evangelizing to your child. You might be in your workplace and you, uh, and you preach Jesus to them. The Lord might call you for Africa, but the moment we accept Jesus, we all evangelists. So no one of us can say that we are not evangelists. And even if you can't speak good, then you testify. Your testimony of what the Lord has done for you will touch someone else. And you can evangelize that, evangelize that way. Because that is the easiest way of telling people where I were, how the Lord saved me, what happened to me, where I am now. And I also want that for them. We all know that without him, we are lost. So that is just in small. So what I'm saying to us is we can't say, yes, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior and my King. And, and I will live forever with you. Because remember, and that is what I want to, us to remember again. Remember, our God, our Father, our, the, our, the love of our life. He is the king of the kings. He is the Lord of all. He reigns over everything. And we will go into that now. You and I will live forever. And forever is forever, ever, ever, ever. And we will live with the king. And we will have peace and harmony. But we need now to step into that place that we also start doing for the Lord. We can't just say, yes, Lord, I accept you. And then go and hide in a dark place sitting, waiting for Jesus. Yes, you will also go to heaven, but you're missing so much because as you go out, there's rewards that we will get. There's crowns that we will one day get. So I'm stirring your faith today to pick up what the Lord wants you to do. So that is just uh, how I want to start off. So um, I, immediately, I just want to go and read to us 
in the book of Acts. So, so, so amazing. Acts, and I'm going to start with chapter 1, verse 1. And we're going to go through till uh, verse 8. So I just want to read to you, preparing Africa for the king. Our mandate. Yours might be the whole world, preparing the world for the king. The other day I saw an amazing post of one of my friends and I reposted it. And it said, earth is preparing for war, but heaven is preparing for marriage. So, guys, we have to look around us what's going on. We have to really at this stage, you know, get ourselves at the right place, um, get into the right line and start really doing what, what we need to do. We don't have to look for, look around us. We can see where we are. So let us read Acts chapter 1. And this is the beginning. So Acts chapter 1, and we know Acts. It's an amazing book of God. And it says, the former treatise have I made, O Philophysus, of all that Jesus began to both to teach and to do. So I just want to stop there. So Paul is writing and he says, the former treatise have I made, O Philophysus, of all the things that Jesus began to teach and to do. So if we go and look at the word treatise, what is the meaning of that word? The, the meaning of that word, it is, it's a formal piece of writing that considers and examines a particular subject. So that is the meaning of that word treatise. So it's a piece of writing that considers and examines a particular subject. Now, what is the subject that he's talking about? Listen carefully what is the subject he's talking about. So remember, Paul says, this is very important. He really sat down, he examined this, he went through it. This is so important um, that he wants to give it to us. And what he's saying, what, what this part is about, this subject is about, it is of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. So he says, I'm going to put to you what Jesus did and what Jesus taught so that you can be followers of that, so that you can run with that message. So let us go forward. It says, to whom he also showed himself alive of his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them for 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining the kingdom of God. So what is he saying? He said, after Jesus rose up, after he died on the cross, he paid for our sins. We can be alive. We can be with him forever. Um, those who want to commit ourselves to him will live in his kingdom forever. He said that they saw him for 40 days. So it's not just there was an empty grave. No, for 40 days he was seen by them. And remember, we also have to remember in Matthew where it says when he died, all the rocks tore open and the graves open. And there was other people who also stood up and walked uh, with him out of the grave. So, but for 40 days, they saw Jesus and he says he's writing now this very amazing account of what Jesus did. And listen what he says. He says, they saw him for 40 days. Now, remember, Jesus knew we was going to the father and listen what he says. So this is a very important message because, you know, if you know that you have to pass away in 40 days, you will make sure that you let people know what is the most important. Am I right or not? You will let people know everything that you want on your heart, that everything that you can give to them, you will give to them. And, and he says, and, and Jesus was speaking about the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So let us just quickly stop there because when it comes to the kingdom of God, then I get excited. And I want you to get excited. And as I speak, I want the Holy Spirit to make you excited and to take the spirit and deposit it in you and anoint you as even this word go out. Because this, the kingdom of God is such an amazing topic to me. So what is the kingdom of God? In words, in big words, remember when we evangelize, we just have to use one sentence. We can just read one sentence because we are speaking to those who don't know Jesus yet. We are speaking to which doctors. They don't know the Bible. But this is how amazing the word is. Remember, we can speak one verse in the, in the, in the, in the Bible. Remember, it's not us that cause something. We are only the ones who must bring the message. Then the Holy Ghost 
will perform and touch that people. The angels of God will perform the, the word. And that is what we need to know. We don't have, we can be fishermen. Jesus chose the fishermen to be evangelists. They had no very big qualifications. Yes, there were doctors between them or whatever. But we, we can't say, I'm a housewife, or I'm only that, or I'm only that. When you speak the word, it is not you doing it anymore. Because the word of God teaches us that the Holy Ghost performed the word, that the angels of God performed the word. And that is why we have to be so careful, because you get people when it comes to angels and the Holy Ghost and things like that, they are there to do one thing, to perform the word of God. So once you speak the word of God, they will work on, the, on that behalf. When you don't do it, you have to be very careful because it might not be the Holy Ghost that is, uh, that is performing and working. It might be another ghost. And we see it so much now as bad gets all worse but good and light also get much brighter, like Naomi said. And I'm a, I just want to say, when I read that word of yours today, the moment where it said the light and the angels, I could feel it. It really, I could, I could feel the presence of God, like not tang, like it. It really hit me. So it is a very powerful word, and we appreciate that, Naomi. So what I'm trying to tell us, guys. We have to understand where we are and what we have to do. And, and that is why it's so important, the word of the kingdom of God. So for 40 days, Jesus spoke the things regarding the kingdom of God. Now, I want us, I, I, I want to show you another scripture as well. I want us to go to the book of, uh, to Luke 4, verse 43. Luke 4, verse 43. Let's go from verse 42, Luke 4, verse 42. So when it comes to the things of the kingdom of God, it stirs me so much because I will tell you now why. Because that is evangelism. So, and it says, verse 42, and when it was day, that is now Jesus, he departed and went into a desert place. And the people sought after him and came unto him and, and said to him that he should not depart from them. And then he said unto them, that is Jesus speaking, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for therefore I am sent. Okay, so I just want to tell you that one of the main focuses of Jesus was he was speaking about the kingdom of God when he was on earth. Yes, he did many, many other things. He paid for us on the cross. The cross will always be central to Jesus, his resurrection, the blood of Jesus. That is what we all preach when we have crusades and we, when we minister to people. The Holy Ghost, that is all central. It is part of, of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not a new theology or a new root. The kingdom of God is everything of God, the Old and the New Testament. But Jesus was sent to come and do what he needed to come and do so that we can have eternal life so that we can be free. So if we want to put the kingdom of God in words, it is actually in words, the kingdom of God is the eternal sovereign rule or the eternal sovereign spiritual rule of God on earth over all of us who adhere to his authority and rule. In this fallen part of his creation. So that was now, you know, that was now big words. So let us break it up, up in smaller parts. So the kingdom of God, what is it? It's God's eternal. So it means, eternal means it's from everlasting to everlasting. So it means that God, he's king from everlasting to everlasting. So that is eternal. Sovereign means that it is only him. There is no government that can say we want this and we want that. There is no I can say this. God say, because you know why? He knows what is the best for us. So he's sovereign. He says left and it's left. You can't say, no, I think it's right. No, sovereign. He knows which way to go. So it's his eternal sovereign spiritual rule that we must understand as well. The rule that they have is spiritual. So, yes, it manifests physically, but it's spiritual. And that is why we need to search the things of the spirit. 
Because once we get hold of it, it will manifest in the, in the physical. It's a spiritual rule. And many people confuse it. And I think it's for now everything. Yes, it manifests from spirit, from the spiritual to the natural. And we say it's the rule of God on earth, this part where we are now, on the people, us, who willingly submit to him. So we have a choice. We must choose yes or no. Sorry, there, there is no in between. You either choose Jesus or you don't choose him. If you don't choose him, you know where you will go. If you, if you stand in the middle, you will also go that way. There's only one way. If you choose Jesus, you will be eternally with him. And then the last part that we have to understand, that the kingdom of God is on those who willingly accept his rule on this fallen part of his creation. And it's not nice to say, but we know we're in this fallen part. Me and you are part of this fallen part. But yes, we accepted Jesus Christ. And that is why we're not part of this anymore. We are the ones now who must run with this message of the kingdom to transform this fallen part into his glory. That is what we need to do. So I hope you understand the concept in, in the bigger picture. So what we have to understand is, if I can show it to this to you, we have got one world, one round world. But in this world, there's two leaders, there's two kingdoms. We have, and we, and this is how it is. You have got light and darkness. You've got Satan and you've got God. You've got good and you've got bad. You've got Holy Spirit and you've got evil spirit. And we have to choose. So it is our choice. And that is, in short, evangelism. So if you get this, you will understand what it's all about. And the moment it got to me, the moment this message of the kingdom of God really stirred to me and I start looking into the things of the kingdom of God. And the more I looked, the more my mouth were hanging open because I was missing for many years so much because I heard about this message. And we all speak about the kingdom of God, but I didn't I never understand. I knew about it, but I didn't know what it was all about until I started understanding what it's all about. Because you know what happened to me? If you turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew 28 or 12, Matthew 12, verse 28, Matthew 12, 28, Matthew 12, verse 28, and it says, but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. It's such a powerful scripture. It says, I'll read it again. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, the other version says by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. And that really got to me because everywhere I saw, we saw that the evil spirits was cast out. We saw, I saw those things happening and we see it. Now only you see it. Everywhere we see, we know about it happening, but we don't get it into our head to understand the moment that happened. The kingdom of God, the fullness of God is manifesting right in front of us and his glory is manifesting in front of us. And what is pure in heaven is now on, on open display for everyone to see. And he shows the world that he is king. He says, nothing else can stand before me. You have to go. And we as children of God have that authority. The moment we go into a place, the angels of God is there. God has anointed us. And what is the anointing? The anointing is what God has put on us to perform for him a certain task. So, and the anointing, we must understand that the anointing is not to hold a microphone or the anointing is not a lot of medals that I have because now I am the man. No, the anointing is given to us to break the yoke of the enemy. That is why we anointed. Hallelujah. That is why we anointed. We all say, Lord, I want more of you. Lord, I, 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 I want your presence. I, I want your power. Yes. And then, and then what then? It is not for us. It is for him. It is for his glory. We must go out, set the captives free, break the yoke of the enemy, raise up the dead, uh, cleanse the lepers, let the blind see the deaf hear. And that is what we're seeing wherever we go. But the moment that we get it into our head, we will start walking in that. Because that is faith. That is what faith is. Faith 
is to see the unseen materialize. That is what faith is. Faith is to, it's not happened yet, but you know it's going to happen. And how do you do it? You know who is your God. You know that my God is the king over everything. There's nothing that can stand with him, in front of him. I will be with him forever. I'm his child. I am not alone. His spirit is within me. He has anointed me. His angels is working on my behalf. If you can see now the angels standing with you, you will, you will fall off your chair. This whole platform will be shaken. But that is who we are. And as a time such as now, like Naomi's word was now, the Lord is even releasing more angels. They all standing like we were. They, they standing with us like hands folded. They've got nothing to do because you don't perform the word of God. They can only work on the word of God. So if you say in the name of Jesus, I cast you outside, they will go. But otherwise they're standing this. They're walking all over where you go. And they, just, you know, there's a whole legion standing and waiting for you. So what I'm stirring up in you today, my friends, and even myself, is for us to become more bolder, to run with this word, to go into the more about the kingdom of God, of his reign, of his glory, because that is where the, the word of the kingdom of God, that's the war. You understand? The moment you speak kingdom of God, it's clash because it's good against evil. That is the word. Because remember, the, and, the, and the, the, the Bible is full of amazing words. It's really so. But remember, what you preach, that happens. You must always remember that. So, and, and, and also, guys, what I want you to understand is this. Do not go and preach to someone of where you are at this moment. So something now happened to me and you're in this moment and you, and you want to speak to someone and you speak to them that word. No, that is not the word for them. That is the word for you. You have to make sure to God and ask him, what must I tell the people? Because they are at a different place than you are. So don't think what is now for now for me is also for them. The Lord must tell you what is for them. So make sure that you give them the word in time because that is the key to everything. So um, I, I just want to go a little bit further. I, I've now went totally off the scripture, so, so praise God for that. And um, he said, uh, verse 4 says in Acts 1, verse 4, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which he said, you hear of me. So Jesus said to him, now a little going but further. He said, don't go, don't worry. Just wait. Something is coming your way. And he says it so nice. He says, wait for the promise of the father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. So he said, Jesus said to them, he said, John was baptizing you with the water, the physically. But he says, not far from now, there will be a spiritual baptism. And wait for that, because that is what you're going to need. So you have the physically what? There's a spiritual baptism coming. Just wait for it. And he says, and, and when they did, well, uh, we came together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the, again the kingdom of Israel? So the people see, see Jesus. They say, but Jesus, are you not coming to restore now? This way we are now. Can't you come and do this now? Please, we then thought you're the king. You must come and restore this now. That is the kingdom we want. We want Israel to be the, the head. But Jesus couldn't do that because you know why. Because if he had to restore Israel, we would have been lost. All of us would have been lost. All the Gentiles would have been gone if he had to come and do that there. No, he had to come and do the spiritual thing. So he first had to do the spiritual thing had to be completed before the physical thing. And he said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in all over Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts thereof, of earth. So what is Jesus saying? He says, you have to go and wait for me. Because I died, I will send you the helper, and the helper will help you to go and evangelize. 
Okay, so yes, we all need the Holy Ghost. We need the Spirit of God. And it's and it's. I just want to give you some amazing scriptures, or that something that is not, but it touches me. That Reinhard Bonker always says, and I want you to listen closely. He says everyone must get his own anointing or his own flame. Everyone, because I can't have Naomi's anointing. Naomi can't have my. We we don't want that. He says he says it so nicely. He says God is not a duplicator. God is the creator. Hallelujah. So he has got a special anointing for each and every one of us. So sometimes we see this man of God or woman of God and we think, wow, if I can just have them. Or in Africa so much, they say, pray for me, I want your anointing. My brother, you do not want my anointing. God has not called you for, for my anointing. It's your own anointing that you need. Because you have to break yokes that I cannot do. So remember, God is the creator. He's not a duplicator. He will give you what you need. So we also remember what he said, that the gifts of the spirit is not medals of honor. It is, it, 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 it is for war. It is not something just for us. So we just need to, to always remember that. We also have to understand that the Holy Ghost is given to us. We have got that. The Holy Ghost will work with us. The angels of God will work on our behalf to perform his word and what he must done or what he wants done. So I, I'm just urging you guys again today that we must understand that God is for us. We are strong. The king is on our side, but we have to be the hands and the feet. And I'm asking you today, if you're not going to be the hands and the feet and the mouth, that is why the word of God says, then the rocks will cry out. You don't want the rocks to cry out. We are supposed to do it. Me and you, everyone where he is in your area. But please cry out, Jesus, 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 and you will see what happened. We all need to do what we have to do. Now, Omi, tell me how much time is left. Is there still time left? Yes, John, you have. You've got another 15 minutes. Okay, 100%. I, I'm just, I'm not going to be too long. I just want to start closing down. So I just want to give us a few things that I just want to run past us because we've now touched quite a lot of bases. But remember, I, I want to, 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 to just quickly tell us about the Holy Ghost. So, so what is the Holy Ghost? What is the, the goal of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is always there. It will always draw us closer to Jesus. We must understand that because in the times that we are, if you go to a church or you go to an event, you have to be so careful of the spirit that operates. So if the spirit, it don't, don't draw you to Jesus, you must immediately say, Lord, what is wrong here? Because remember, there's two spirits working in this world. You've got the Holy, Ghost, the Holy Spirit, but also the evil spirits. And the evil spirits will always draw you to money or to other things or to self or to you know, the Holy Spirit draw you to Jesus. That is his, one of his main works. The Holy Spirit, and I'm just going to run. We all know this, but I just want us to, to hear it again. Because remember, as we speak the word, we're prophesying. As we prophesy, the Spirit of God goes in us and just establish again. The angels is touching as we speak this word. So the Holy Spirit is our teacher. It convicts us or convinces us of sin. The Holy Spirit dwells and fills in. It dwells in us, so it stays in us, and it fills us. So, so we can be filled many, many times because sometimes we might be low. As you give, you low. The Lord just pours out. As we're listening on this platform, the Lord is pouring out His Spirit again. When you go from this platform, you might think, "Joe, now I'm feeling nice again." No, you're not feeling nice. The Holy Spirit was poured out on you without you even knowing that because that is what's happening on this platform. And that is why Naomi and Amanda and uh, Apostle Boniface is having this platform because as we speak to each other, the Spirit is being poured out in us and we have to start understanding these things. Um, the Holy Spirit is our source of revelation and wisdom. My mouth always hang open when Naomi and Amanda start to speak. 
because the things that they speak, my goodness, it is dripping with honey out of their mouths. And it's like amazing to me when I hear the words that they speak. But that is the Holy Spirit. It says there is the source of revelation and wisdom. I always think, where do they get these things? It's in the word of God. But to put it together like that, that is only the spirit of God. Then it also, point five, guides us in truth and in power. We have to understand that the Holy Ghost is truth, but it's also power. So it's the spirit of power. So the kingdom of God, it is a, it's, it's a kingdom. The word of God says it. He says the kingdom of God is a God. Of, it, is a, it's a, it is a kingdom of power. Why? Because in the beginning when God said, let there be light, there was power and there was light. So it's power. It is a powerful, we've got a powerful God, the all-powerful God. There is also another one who's got some power, but we have the all-powerful God. That other one, he submits. If we say Jesus, his knee must bow, tongues must confess. And that is what we need to do. So I'm stirring you today, my friends, to start speaking the word, speaking life, speaking Jesus. Go out and tell the world about Jesus. That is the only way. This fallen part of the creation will be changed. That is the only way. If we stay quiet, nothing's going to happen. If we start running away from our situation and our problems, which many of us did, I did it in the past as well. There's a problem, so what do you do? You keep quiet and you go. And then that problem will consume you. It is time to stand up, speak the word of God, stand on the truth, and confront that evil. It says, Resist the, resist the devil and he will flee. You don't have to do that. Just re 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 resist it and he will flee from you. By standing on the word of God, by knowing who you are, that is how we do it. Then another one, the Holy Ghost give us the spiritual gifts. And that is very, very important. Because, you know, for, for many of us, we just say, now we want to be children of God. But I tell you what, the moment you accept Jesus, you become an evangelist. And you received your gift. So, and if you haven't gotten your gift yet, I, I now prophesy over you in the name of Jesus, the King of Kings, that he will release amazing gifts today to you. New gifts in the name of Jesus. Gifts that will change and transform this world, the area that you're in. I pray that the Lord will relieve his might, release his mighty gifts upon you, on everyone on this platform in mighty ways. And that we will hear our people run and say, thus saith the Lord. That we will hear how they lay their hands on the sick. I can feel, really, I can feel the heat of, of, you know, going through my hands now. So let us just all praise, put our hands forward. And Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that right now, by your Holy Ghost, you will release mighty gifts upon your children, my Lord. Gifts for your kingdom, Lord, that your kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven, my Lord. My Lord, that we will run and not be weary, and that we will, where we go, we will see your kingdom manifest in mighty way. We will see your kingdom, my Lord. We will experience your spirit working on our behalf, that you'll anoint each and every one of us, my Lord, with our own flame. We're unique. You're not a duplicator. You're the creator. Create in us, Lord, a, a, a amazing spirit, my Lord, amazing gifts, my Lord all for your glory, and let it manifest as we speak your word, my Lord. Father, let Africa be saved, and use these hands in Jesus' mighty name. Use them mightily in Jesus' name. I pray for finances, Lord. Release it over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, guys. Uh, we were still at a few points, but I just felt led to do that as well. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses and intercedes on our behalf. So remember, when you're weak, when you feel you can't anymore, when you feel you're alone, it's a lie of the enemy. You're never alone. You can say, Spirit of the living God, come and touch me now. And he will come and touch you. But you must ask that for him. Don't go into your room, go and lock your room, put the blanket over your head. I'm speaking to someone now. Don't go and lie and wait for life to pass. It will not pass. You have to address. You have to stand up in your rightful place. So whoever I'm speaking to, I want you to stand up and 
ask, ask the Holy Ghost to come and equip you and to come and fill you again and to, to help you with your weakness and he is interceding for it. So the moment he sees you, he's, he will, he's interceding on our behalf. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's our intercessor. The Holy Spirit seals in. So he seals us. The Holy Spirit is our seal. So for all believers, we've got a seal, and the seal is the Holy Spirit. Then what is, what is, what is so amazing as well, he makes us new. And he gives us eternal life. So by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God coming in, we are renewed by his Spirit. We made new. We made so that one day we can stand before God in righteousness so that we can face him face to face. So we are made new and given eternal life. And then the last point that I just want to touch on, the Holy Ghost sanctifies us and it enables us for good fruit. So it sanctifies us and it enables us for good fruit, food. Uh, sorry, good fruit, not good food. So the Holy Ghost sanctifies us and enables us for good fruit. So it sanctifies us, meaning we, we all know the scripture and says, uh, um, you know, that the, the kingdom of God, we have to stand in righteousness with God. Um, the, the, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. So it says that the Holy Ghost sanctifies us. It cleans us. It's make us, making us holy. And it enables us. It helps us that we will have good fruit. Why? Because on our fruit, we will be known. On the things that we do, we will be, we will be known. Because on what we do, God will be known. So if, if you're not having any fruits, then how can people see Jesus in you? The fruit is people look up to you and they say, wow, that is Jesus. Look what he's doing. So let us all be trees bearing amazing fruit. We cannot do it on our own. We need Jesus to do it for us. Amen. Then I just want to close off. Our, uh, I, I, I think I've got a minute or so. I just want to run through us. So, yes, we understand that evangelism is then a war. And we have got amazing weapons and what is the weapons that we have we have the word of god which is our main weapon we have the angels of god we've got the holy ghost we've got faith as a weapon we've got the blood of jesus we've got the cross we've got prayer we've got praise and worship we've got our own testimony <clears throat> and then a very important one we have got unity so where we gather in unity, there, that is a mighty weapon. I tell you, if you're standing in unity, wherever we go, that is a mighty weapon. So I have said quite a lot. I hope that I've stirred in your spirit today that you will understand that we all have something to do. And, and, and you know what? The angels of God and the spirit of God is waiting on you. It's waiting on you to start moving. You must be the hands and the feet. That is why you were made for now, for this time. That is why we're on this platform. So I, I, I pray that the Lord will just bless you and use each and every one of you in mighty, mighty ways. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Wow. I feel so um, <laughs> uplifted, Juan. Um, yeah. I have not seen this side of you in um, outside of your evangelistic platform. You really mm. were on fire and um, you have stirred us up. I just want ben Bishop Boniface to share what's on his heart and then um, I'll take it from there to move us forward in what God has got in store for us this morning. Thank you so, so much. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Evangelist Joan. Uh, I'm really being steered up as well, you know, to do the work of God more. And uh, in this platform, and there are some of you that have been struggling with preaching the word of God and where can I start? You know, the, the, the evangelist has said, you, you are an evangelist as, as long as you are born again Amen. and you can preach the word. Uh, I, think, 
I think Bishop has lost his the, connection. The move of God. A, a, am I communicating? Yes, you're back. Sure. So you begin to get into the move of God. And this is why God has brought the evangelist, is to steer us up, to begin to do what we are not doing, you know, and begin to evangelize. We, we've got the pulpit everywhere, <laughs> okay? It's not just in church. We have a pulpit everywhere to preach the gospel and to win the lost and to pray for the sick and to cast out demons. I love the scripture he brought forth, this, where Jesus says, if you see me casting out, the, the, the spirits by the spirit of God, then you know that the kingdom of God is within you. We, we got to flow in that direction. Brethren, it's high time that we all became evangelists and evangelized to the winning of souls. And I'm so glad. Uh, I'll pray, uh, but let uh, uh, Apostle Naomi take us through. Uh, that's what was in my heart. So my desire is we all in this platform become evangelists to preach the gospel, cast out demons, heal the sick, and do what God, Jesus, left us with to do on the earth. We have no time to play. Not at all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you so, so much. Those of you on the platform and have enjoyed Juan's ministry and believe that God has called you, even though you cannot participate uh, physically going out, you've got jobs, you've got family commitments, you've got ministry commitments. I would like just um, Juan just to share what God is doing in his next crusade. Some of you on this platform are going to be joining him. And we are very excited because God is moving in Africa. And even as I said, the nations that have been spoken of as lost, lost on the list, destitute in great economic trouble, God says that he is going to raise them up to be first. And we really believe this. And, and over the last couple of months, um, I've been terribly excited. And those of you who've got eyes to see and ears to hear as the Spirit of God is leading you, you have noticed that God is calling many people to bring in the harvest. And Juan is one of them. And some of us cannot participate physically, but I'd like Juan just to share about what's going to happen in Malawi. And then I'm going to give you an opportunity to be part of this river of God, you know, in whatever way or form. If you want to partner with Joan in Kingdom Revival Africa through prayer and intercession, we will need your prayers. We need your backup if you're an intercessor. If you have a few extra finances to give, so put your money into the kingdom. Because it's in the kingdom that it multiplies, not necessarily in your bank. <laughs> yes, there's some interest there, but the greatest interest yeah. you can ever yeah. wish for is investing in the yeah. kingdom. It gives you a higher return. And so I just so, want to um, have um, Juan share about Malawi. And then I'm going to put on the screen while he is sharing, I'm going to, Juan, put on the screen also the financial um, places where we can sow. So go ahead, Juan. Thank you so much, Naomi. Um, yes, uh, so the Lord uh, for this time has focused us very much on Malawi. And uh, we go all, still all over, but our main focus on our main, cru main crusade is in Malawi. So for those who don't know what a crusade is, it is a bigger platform where we try and get as much as people in that is lost to the Lord. And then we give a very simple message and we see uh, amazing work. So God come, he come and show those people that he's God. And sometimes we don't have to say a lot. He just pitch up and the people just, they can see who is God. And the Holy Ghost touched them. The evil spirits go, people healed. I'm thinking about our last crusade. The last crusade we had in Salima, which were the Muslim dominated area. And our sister Amanda with, with, was with us. And um, Naomi was with us. And I still remember Naomi, when you carry that little baby girl on your arms with the hands that was bent like this, and as you prayed that it went, can you remember that? That was so amazing. So, so praise God for that. And then that last night, the Lord just, we were also speaking about the infilling of the Holy Ghost, and there was a big wind, and then all of a sudden there was dew drops, but it was not dew drops, but things falling from heaven on our faces and all over us. It was like water, and then many things just start happening in, in on that crusade field. 
And Naomi described it as perfume from heaven being sprayed onto us. So Yah and Amanda did amazing work. They're praying for the sick. We saw so many people coming to Jesus. So, um, and still, um, you guys know, and those who don't know, Amanda is doing amazing work with this platform and Naomi and, and uh, Apostle Boniface and everyone with their orphanage that they're busy building there. So the Lord is really doing amazing work there and also take hands with them. So the Lord has now called us into an area called Dirandi, which is just outside Blantyre. Now, according to things that is written, it says it is one, one of the biggest slums in the southern parts of Africa. So the southern hemisphere of Africa, it's the biggest slums. There's up to 500,000 people. 90% uh, is unemployed. And you can, the things that are right that we have researched, it is not good. So we must understand it's not like in our Western countries where there is grants and sasa money and hospitals. The sick are lying outside. They don't have houses. We experience it all over Africa. There is dire, dire need for intervention. And the only one who can change a situation like that, we can't. Not even a government can. Only, only Jesus can. And that is why we're going there. That area is... It's a renowned for some violence and bad things going, but we go in the power of the Holy Ghost with Jesus and his angels with us. And our crusade is almost going to be in the center of, of Dirande. But when we, we did some, some, we call it spiritual mapping, and it's not a bad word. It is when we went to see how everything God, how God put it together, we realized that because it's just outside Blantyre, but Blantyre area was established in the, I think, 1763 by, or 1765 by the Scottish church as a mission base. But now today, see what the enemy is doing. Now it's the biggest slums with the worst things that's going on. So we're going with that original intent of God and proclaiming that Jesus is Lord. So as we speak, um, uh, we had one of our last big meetings yesterday, um, uh, all the leaders together. So we've made our jingle for the radio station. The people is speaking on television already. Um, we, as, as we get to Malawi, we're actually leaving for Malawi next week, Tuesday already. Please pray with us. Take our hands. Um, there's a lot of work. Um, I'll just quickly run for you what we're going to do. So we're not only there for the people. It's actually, when we do a crusade, we impact the whole area. We impact the whole country. Because you can imagine we're, we're, we're 10 people from coming together to an area bringing the kingdom of God, manifesting, God manifesting himself there. So from government, we see government people. We Last time, Naomi had an amazing word, and we had the opportunity to go into the the government buildings with the presidents and minister with all those people, and we could release a word of God to them. So the Lord is favoring us. So we've got quite a program. We have up to 500 pastors and leaders on the pastors and fire conference, which uh, Naomi and, and, and some of the people will also minister to. So you can see the impact that, that is there. It is a very huge impact. It is 500 churches or because some of those pastors might have 100 churches, but it's a big impact. We've got a women conference. Then what I'm very excited about, for the first time, we're going to have a children crusade. So we're going to have a full-blown blown crusade, giving them Jesus, healing the sick, setting the captives free, blind eyes open, deaf ears, hear, cripple walk, and we see what always what the Lord does to the children. We're going to have a full crusade the Sunday morning, because normally Sunday mornings we go to different churches, but we're not. We're going to have a crusade. And we thought it good to perhaps give the children everything, you know, because we know there's thousands of children. But uh, up to now, we actually want to do so much more. But we then thought, and Nazarene, that also came through Naomi and uh, Amanda, uh, which is our crusade director in Malawi. She said, no, let us buy 2,000 big school books and 2,000 pencils. So we've got 2,000 books and 2,000 pencils so long for the first 2,000 children who's going to need it. So we're not going to give them sweets or whatever. We will give them something in return that they can use again because they don't have things like that. They don't have shoes. They don't have clothes. The poverty is, is very dire. So um, in all in all, 
to do something on this scale, I must tell you, it it costs something. Uh, it is quite a, a vast amount. Uh, you know, our crusade budget was just over 240,000 rand. And uh, as of now, we still need quite a lot. The crusade will go on, but we pray and we believe God because we've got six days left. So, yeah, that is where we are. Please pray with us. We need your prayers. Thank you, Juan. Thank you so, so much. I'm going to share a, a, the screen for anyone who wants to sow. Please write it down. Pray and ask the Lord. Rand. Everything counts, you know. And, um, and I want to pray uh, for every one of us to receive that passion. You know, as Johan said, there's something that came and, and I feel like something's been stirred in me today. And every time I listen to an evangelist, something is ignited in me. Share the screen for the finances so that um, those of you who want to write it down quickly can do so. Um, and jot it down. So there we go. There's the screen for the finances. So please write it down. And I'm going to just pray as you write. I'm going to pray for you that the Lord really stirs in your heart. And as you partner with Africa Revival, you are partnering with the kingdom of God, even if it's a 50 rand, a 20 rand, whatever it is, you are sowing like that one um, story and parable of the woman who just put her last penny and it doesn't matter. It's your commitment. It's your heart. So Father, I just thank you for everyone on this platform. I thank you for those who are on YouTube, those who will be listening to this message. Father, stir in our hearts to sow through prayer, through finances, through commitment, to be praying for the revival of Africa, Father. And we just thank you, Lord, for your provision. I thank you, Father, for your passion that's coming into our hearts according to Romans chapter 5 verse 5 it says that the love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Ghost Holy Spirit come and ignite in us a passionate desire to partner with the kingdom to partner with the will of God for your words is in Romans chapter 8 26 and 27 that all things are possible to them who are in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. who are called the called according to his purposes and father each one of us on this platform are one of the called according to your purposes and father your purpose is to see africa saved your purpose is to see africa's destiny shift and for it to become the continent of light and father every one of us plat on this platform has been called to be a participant mm -hmm. of the kingdom of god coming to africa and africa transforming her destiny mm -hmm. and her name and father we thank you today that everyone on this platform as Juan spoke and prayed and declared that your gift is ignited that your fruits will begin to bear much and in abundance that what Ever you have begun to sow will multiply unto you for the kingdom's sake and for his glory's sake. And so, Father, we thank you for this morning. I thank you, Father, for what you've done and stirred in our hearts. And thank you for the word that is upon Africa, Lord. And now, Father, we pray for every crusade that is happening across the continent of Africa. Lord, we know that there's a crusade happening, 10 crusades happening in Zambia in this week. There's a crusade happening in Malawi. Father, there's a Christ for all nations coming and setting up a base in South Africa to train evangelists. Father, there's Daniel Daniel Detoy, evangelist Daniel Detoy, coming into Africa, South Africa, speaking into Zambia, speaking into Zimbabwe. Father, we thank you for all these evangelists. We ask, Lord, for a great, mighty harvest. Let the river of God begin to flow in Africa, Father. We stand in agreement on this platform. We stand in agreement with one another to lock shields and to stand in unity. For God, there shall be an economic uprising of victory in Africa. Africa shall be the bread basket to the nations of the world. Nothing shall stop the hand of God 
God over Africa. And so, Father, I pray also, if you are in business this morning, if you have a business, I speak prosperity over your business. As you begin to sow into the kingdom, may God bring a revelation of how he will yes. increase your business. Because as you sow, he yes. desires you to increase so that in your increase, mm. your 10% mm. increases. Father, I thank yes, you that Lord. some on yes, this platform yes, will Lord. end up living on their 10% mm. and give 90%. Father, mm. we thank you for increase. We thank you for mm. favor. Because, Lord, yes. you are the CEO of our businesses. You yes, are the Lord. CEO of our family finances. Yes, and, Father, Lord. we raise today that today there's mm. an outpouring. And I pray the scripture mm. right now in Jesus' mm. name, Isaiah 45, verse mm. 9, it, uh, 10, 8 says, mm. Rain down you heavens from above and yes. let the skies pour down the revealed yes. will of God righteousness yeah. let the earth open yeah. let the earth open yeah. in treasuries in yeah. africa yeah. let them bring yeah. to the nations of africa yeah. and let the revealed will and the righteousness of god spring up together i the lord mm. have created you africa Africa. Mm. Oh, Father, I thank you for this word. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask of me things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Father, we thank you that you will give us words of knowledge right now on how to run our businesses more effectively. You will give us words of knowledge right now, Lord, concerning our family dilemmas. Father, we thank you that your word gave this morning where you said the spirit of the Lord is hovering over chaos. The spirit of the Lord is hovering over darkness. The spirit of the Lord is hovering over confusion. And Father, when your word says in Genesis, chapter one, two, and the spirit of the Lord mm. hovered on this chaos. It says, mm. then God spoke, let there be light. Father, Thank I think you. that this is the timing of you speaking light. Mm. Everyone mm. on this platform, speaking light yeah. and life over businesses, mm. families, nations, That's governments, land. Law. In Jesus' mm. name, awake Jesus the name. Rise up, yes, son and daughter of the Lord God. Yes, Lord. Let the King of Glory come into your Amen. situation. Ah, nice For the story, King man. of Glory is mighty in battle. Yeah. And Father, yeah. we thank you that everyone who might be sick this mm. morning and is yes, limited mm. to be yes. active mm. in your kingdom, I command in the name mm. of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be healing be right now. Rise up man. now. If you could not mm. walk, if you've got a knee issue, a back yes. issue, mm. if have got mm. any sickness, yes. I say to you, rise mm. up the yes. stand up. Rise. You will be limited mm. to them work this yeah. morning. No more limitations yeah. upon your yeah. life, in your finances, yeah. in your health, in anything Thank that concerns you. you. I speak now. Yeah. Rise up, awaken, rise up. and be Work. effective for the kingdom of God. For yeah. the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm. Father, we thank you mm. for this morning. Thank you for what you've done. I pray for this yeah. video and this recording to go wide across That's the nation long. and let your sons That's and daughters be awakened. In mm. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. amen. Father, we thank you. Amen, amen. and amen. John, is there anything you amen. still want to say before we? Yeah, close? I, just, I just want to close with this thing as the Lord leads me. Um, uh, and uh, Reinhard Bonk always used to mention it, and we have to understand it. If someone is falling in a pool and drowning, it doesn't matter who is stretching out their hand towards that piece, that person, if it's a man or a woman. It doesn't matter who saves him. That man will grab that hand. So it doesn't matter if you're male or female. You are made to help the drowning. So I speak this over you. If you think perhaps you're a woman, that you're not made for that. It is not about that. Please, people are drowning. They're going to die if you're not stretch out your hand and help them. Thank you so much. Amen. Over to you, Bishop. You can close up. Thank you so very much. It's time that God is saving African continents. God is saving nations. God is saving children as well. And let's uh, move in.
the will of God. Thank you so much for all that God is doing in our lives. And let us make ourselves available. You know, I've been preaching to prisoners and I saw them how massively they were coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they, they just love the word of God so very much. So let us all go flat out and preach the word of God. Let us also support, you know, finances. Let us support in material. Let us support. Because like what is happening in Malawi, it's something so huge and bringing, you know, glory to God and a smile on a child and on people's lives and on families. So thank you, each and every one of you, for having been in this meeting. I know the time you have spent is worthwhile. You have not wasted time, but it's worthwhile and of great investment. Uh, thank you so much, Evangelist Joan. You really tears up. And uh, thank you for your time. And we'll pray that you come again uh, in Jesus' name. So let me just pray as we close. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you bless every man and every woman who has listened to this message and to the core of giving and to the core of blessing and to the core of encouraging and to the core of praying for the sick, casting out the devils, releasing the anointing of God upon Africa. Thank you, Lord, for the prophetic word that you have spoken through your handmaid uh, for Africa. Lord, you have accurately spoken, and I pray that this word be received and be embraced and be considered in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the word Evangelist John has spoken. Lord, Jesus, you, you, you said, uh, until the, the word of the gospel, the word of the kingdom be preached to the whole world, then the end shall will come. God, if we are not preaching this gospel, then we are delaying the end. Help us, Lord, to run in your mission and in your plan. In the name of Jesus, give us that enthusiasm, oh God. Give us that charisma. Give us that zeal, Lord. Answer the prayers of men that called unto you and still calling on you for massive evangelism to the whole world. That God will not leave any nation, will not leave any people group, any tribe, any tongue. They shall all receive the kingdom of God by being born again. So Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we glorify your name in Jesus' mighty name. I pray with thanksgiving in my heart. And let me speak the blessing of the Lord as it's written in number 622. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. May the Lord lift his countenance towards you. And may the Lord give you the peace and the shalom. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Back to Naomi. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. And those of you who are touched by the Lord physically, we want to hear about you. We want to testify. And so you are welcome to contact me on our uh, messenger Facebook page, Naomi Schinneberger, or on Ariella Ministries, and share your testimony because God is faithful. Thank you so, so much. And please continue following us. And we look forward to hearing the testimonies, Juan. And those of you on the platform, I know some of you are coming and joining us. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person on Wednesday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And um, God bless you all. Thank you again for joining us. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, Juan. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. Shalom, bye -bye. shalom. Bye. Shalom, bye. bye. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Bye. 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 Bye.